blessed garb. So the Prophet said, for the moment I only have what I'm wearing. When I have another garb, I will give it to you. Think for a moment. How can you and I go to sleep? That is why I often quote the words of Rawls Qarni Rahmatullah Ali. Every evening, before the sun used to set on the western horizon, he used to say, Allahumma, man ma tajoo'an fala tu'akhidhni bihi. Allah, I have the surplus food in my house. I am giving it in charity. Whoever dies across the globe out of hunger, don't hold me liable, my Lord. There is nothing in this house other than that which is in my belly. And whatever excess clothing he had, he would give it in charity every evening. And he would say, oh my Lord, whoever dies without shelter, don't hold me liable for it. I don't have anything other than that with which I have cleared my body. Imagine you and I, who have excess and excess. That is why somebody sent Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu a herb for indigestion. Somebody gave Abdullah ibn Umar and he said, this is very good for digestion. You know, you have a, you have a problem with your digestive system, reflux and all those related problems. This is very good. Abdullah ibn Umar said, I don't ever eat till my belly is full, what am I going to digest? I don't ever eat till my belly is full, what am I going to do? Give it to those people who indulge in eating, maybe they have a better need for it. Maybe they have a better need for it. You and I, I know when I pack my toiletry bag that Nexium, Caviscon, and all of the related tablets unfortunately are there before anything. What, how, how would we face Allah? Always God me said, Allah, whoever dies across the door, don't hold me liable, my Lord. I don't own but what I cleared myself with, and I don't have food but that which is in my belly. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walks into the garden, the orchard of the Sahaba, he picks up a date, he starts eating it. Abdullah ibn Umar is with. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ibn Umar, join me and eat. He said, La ashtahi ya Rasulullah. Oh Prophet of Allah, I don't have an inclination. He said, Ibn Umar, for you it's a matter of inclination or otherwise, for me four days have elapsed, nothing edible has entered the belly of your Nabi. Anyway, a woman sends her son, bring the shirt and bring the blessed garb of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I don't have anything but what I'm wearing, today I have more, I'll give it to you. She comes back and he says, my mom says, give me what you're wearing. My mom says, give me what you're wearing. The Prophet ﷺ was very modest, very bashful, went in the room, took it out, gave it. He shut the door, stayed there. This brother takes it. The woman was very uh, happy and overwhelmed to hold the blessed garb of the Prophet ﷺ. It is the time of prayer. He cannot come outside. Bilal radiallahu anhu knocks on the door and he explains that I really don't have anything. There's a woman who sent her son, persisted on my garb and I couldn't refuse and refute. Sahaba then provide, Allah reveals the verse, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبَسُطَهَا كُلَّ الْبَسْطِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا مَحْسُورًا O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not be over extravagant and do not withhold in its entirety, but strike the balance and maintain moderation. I can go on and on quoting how Islam exhorted him to moderation. My point is as follows, and, and please focus on my pattern of thought. When it came to the aspect of character, displaying character, he displayed such amazing character, people talk of presidential pardon. It's an insult to align presidential pardon with the pardon and the clemency of the Prophet wasallam. But he displayed such character, never did Allah tell him, O oh Muhammad wasallam, display character with moderation. Allah said, you're doing a good job, keep it going, it's character that will bring people to the beauty of Islam. In everything else, Allah said, strike the balance. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ We confer the accolade of nobility of conduct upon you. Now let's unpack this here. And let's look at how he interacted and what was the character that he displayed that brought the people to Islam. The likes of Abu Sufyan, who spearheaded, who spearheaded every anti-Islamic campaign right till moments and days before the death of the Prophet wasallam, and at the conquest of Mecca, even this man finds the need and finds amnesty in the beautiful faith and the teachings of Islam. It's a matter of you and I imbibing the character, we are delaying the process. Number one, let's look at the life of the Prophet wasallam when he came to the seniors in the community. Sahaba so Sayyidina was sitting with him, suddenly an elderly woman walks in, he stands up in her respect and her awe, 
and he says, that's my mum coming, that's my mum coming. There was a moment of silence with Sahara because all knew his mum was late. Basatalaha rida'ahu, he spread his blessed shawl, he stood up, he cleared the passage, he ushered her in, he set her down. Sahaba all in confusion, one nudges another. Mother, by logical, foster, what are we talking? Nothing done. When he leaves, O Prophet of Allah, don't we know that your mum is late? Innaha arta'atni. This woman nursed me, she suckled me. And because of that, I have elevated her to the position of my mother. Imagine he's in his prime. He's at his glory. He's at the point of prophethood. There are thousands that gather and converge around him. Yet he is not oblivious of the woman that suckled him while he was an infant. Okay, that was the woman who suckled him. Here comes the real challenge. Who can display character to his servant? Who can display character to his father's servant? Darkat bin Tathalaba. Barakat bin Tathalaba. This was a woman who was the slave girl of Nabi Sassim's father, Abdullah radiallahu anhu. The Prophet Sassim's father passed away at the tender age of 18. He was buried in Medina Munawwara. Nabi Sassim's mother, Amina, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the slave girl, who then came into the custody of Amina radiallahu anha, they go to Medina to visit the grave of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's father. After paying their respect at the grave, they return in. Barakat, the slave girl, who was previously the father, now the mother slave girl, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and uh, Amina radiallahu anha, when they came to a place called Abuwa, we go to Mecca often, recently when I was there with the grace of Allah, I consciously tried to run my thoughts, and I even asked the driver if he could take us into the desert, but obviously there was a bit of restriction and protocol and bureaucracy, so we were unable to access the precise location. But nonetheless, you would find Abu Wa on the road as you are traveling between Medina and Mecca. Imagine for a moment and turn the pages of history and reflect my brother and reflect my sister. They had left Medina. Muhammad Sassim is no more than six years. The world awaits this person's arrival. At the point, his father is laid before his birth. They come to the sensitive location between Mecca and Medina called Abu Wa. And the decision of Allah is that Amina radiallahu anha must pass away at that point. I would have thought in my foolishness, you would have thought in your naive understanding. It would have been greater and better if Allah stalled Amina till Mecca Mukarrama. Settle the infant, settle the young lad into his familiar environment, get him back into the rhythm of life, and then gradually take Amina. But one great lesson was put down, one principle was established, Whoever's death has been decreed on any land, he or she will not die elsewhere. If Muhammad sallallahu mother can pass away, scholars say this was the first death Nabi sallallahu observed in his life. Can you imagine, it's a mountainous terrain, it's a desert land, his dad is late, his mom passes away, he's at the mercy of a slave girl. And this man's future, this man's destiny, this man, what's coming ahead, the entire world is awaiting him. He's going to brighten up the great the world. Muslims and non-Muslims have agreed and con 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 conceded to the fact that amongst the greatest of people that have influenced the world, there can be no doubt that the first, the first out of them all, and the greatest out of them all remains and will remain is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This woman, Barakat, now comes into the custody of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As he grows up, she's now become the slave girl, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inherits as part of the inheritance and the legacy. He then liberates her. What does he do first? He liberates her. She gets married to a person by the name of Ubaid. Ubaid. And from that wedlock, Allah blesses them with a union. From that uh, union and that wedlock, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them with a girl by the name of Ayman. Ayman. Thereafter, she, that marriage is dissolved and then she gets married to Usama radiyallahu Zayd radiyallahu anhu. And from that union, Allah blesses them with Usama radiyallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, after my mother, if there's any woman I will give respect, honor and recognition, then it is the slave girl of my father, mother and me. He used to refer to her and say, Ummi ba'da ummi. A mother after my mother, Amina. A mother. I'm saying to you, those of us that have servants in our home, 
How do I speak to my servant, leave my child? If I have some discipline and degree of, of respect, remember, the crisis in the life of that individual will keep him there because he needs a job. But your child's tongue will become rotten. You will spoil your akhirah. He won't leave because of your hostility and aggression. But you have marred the image of Islam. One of the great scholars from our country recently passed away. An amazing fact in his life. An amazing fact in his life. All the domestic servants that were in his employment, every one of them accepted Islam because of his character. Every domestic servant under his employment was just impressed. When it was inquired what was so outstanding about his character, he would often reduce their burden without decreasing their salary. He would often reduce their burden, you had a long day, you had a tired day, have a break and go, and you know what, just have a half a day. How many times I want a half a day? Do I think that others want a half a day? I want to grow the economic ladder. Don't you think those working for me also want to climb the economic ladder? Or is it that I exploit them and I thrive upon them to climb? That's not the teachings of Islam. In fact, I say, the respect the Prophet Sassim afforded to his slave girl, if the Muslim of today can afford that to his biological mother, that the, 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 the tale of this ummah will be different. The tale of this ummah will be different. I share with you one, two couplets in this regard, regarding the rank of a mother. The Prophet Sassim elevated the slave girl to that of a mother. The tale is as follows. Hafiz Shamsuddin Zahabi Rahmatullah Ali has made mention of it in Al-Kabair. It's very thought-provoking and stimulating couplets. The Arabic poet says, لِأُمِّكَ حَقٌّ لَوْ عَلِمْتَ كَثِيرُ كَثِيرُكَ يَا هَذَا لَدَيْهُ يَسِيرُ فَكَمْ لَيْلَةً بَاتَتْ بِفِقْلِكَ تَشْتَكِ لَمَا مِنْ جَوَاهَا أَنَّةٌ وَزَثِيرُ وَفِي الْوَطْرِ لَوْ تَدْرِي عَلَيْهَا مَشَقَّةٌ فَمِنْ غُصَصٍ مِنْهَا الْفُؤَادُ يَطِيرُ وَكَمْ غَسَلَتْ عَنْكَ الْأَذَى بِيَمِينِهَا وَمَا حِجْرُهَا إِلَّا لَدَيْكَ سَرِيرُ Briefly I run you through. He says, لِأُمِّكَ حَقٌّ لَوْ عَلِمْتَ كَثِيرُ You owe your mom the world if only you knew. كَثِيرُكَ يَا هَذَا لَدَيْهِ يَصِيرُ But if you apply yourself, it's not all that difficult. فَكَمْ لَيْلَةً بَاتَتْ بِفِقْلِكَ تَشْتَكِي How many a night she tossed because of you? لَهَا مِنْ جَوَاهَا أَنَّةٌ وَزَفِيرُ Forget the rest. وَفِي وَدْعِ لَوْ تَدْرِي عَلَيْهَا مَشَقَّ The difficulty she experienced in your delivery, in your birth, is enough to keep you obliged to your mother for the rest of your life. The difficulty she bore and experience in your delivery. وَفِي الْوَضْعِ لَوْ تَدْرِي عَلَيْهَا مَشَقَّةٌ فَمِنْ غُصَصٍ مِنْهَا الْفُؤَادُ يَطِيرُ In essence, her life was on the line. It was either your life or her life. And one brother was telling me, it's amazing. He's got many horses and I visited his farm back in South Africa. He says, the instinct of a female and a mother. He says, I have seen with the mare on my farm, when they are about to deliver the foal, and they go into labor, then often the mare would look for a silent moment, thereby give protection to her foal as she goes into labor pain. And at times she will delay, she will delay her delivery, stall her labor pain, to protect and secure the interest of her foal. To protect and secure the interest of her foal. I said, subhanallah, what Allah has placed, in a female and a feminine, whether human or animal. So the poet says, وَفِي الْوَضْعِ لَوْ تَدْرِي عَلَيْهَا مَشَقَّةً فَمِنْ غُصَصٍ مِّنْهَا الْفُؤَادُ يَطِيرُ وَكَمْ غَسَلَتْ عَنْكَ الْأَذَى بِيَمِينِهَا وَمَا حِجْرُهَا إِلَّا لَدَيْكَ سَرِيرُ She was dressed, she was clad, she was going for a function, and there you messed your diaper. And there you messed your diaper. That is why they say, if you spell diaper reversed, it means repaid. Spell diaper reverse, it means repaid. Anyway, your diaper, you mess your diaper. And what does she do? Does she frown? Does she moan? Does she groan? Whether she's in a hotel or she's in an airport or she's in a mall, she gets busy, she cleans your diaper. With that very hand, she cleaned you. وَكَمْ مَرَّةً جَاعَتْ وَأَعْتَتْ كَقُوتَهَا It's difficult to count the times that she was hungry that you may eat. And really speaking, the poet says, when you ate, she felt more satiated than when she ate herself. وَكَمْ مَرَّةً جَاعَتْ وَأَعْتَتْ كَقُوتَهَا حَنَانًا وَإِشْفَاقًا وَأَنْتَ صَغِيرُ 
فآهن لذي عقل ويتبع الهوى وآهن لأعمى القلب وهو بس